everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. And we're in front of the King shelves, so you know it's a Stephen King video. Um, today we are talking about a viewer request, the Top 5 Least Scariest Stephen King Books. Now when I went into this, I tried to judge whether or not a book was supposed to be scary. Um, whether or not his aim was to scare people. The only book I don't feel like his aim was to scare anybody, uh, we'll get to that in a second. There's only one on the list that I don't think that was his intention, but it's also one of the only books I've ever seen him write that doesn't have anything intentionally scary in it. Um, even in Lisey's story, there was some stuff um, that might have, been, might have leaned a little more toward the horror aspect. But jumping right into it, Christine. I'm going to get a lot of flack for this one. I know this is a lot of people's favorite book from Stephen King. I know a lot of people think it's scary. I have never found the killer car trope scary. Um, I don't I don't see it. I, it's just, it's like, <laughs> I don't understand. It's not like, I, all you got to do is stand in the blind spot and you're safe. The car is just going to spin around you. Either that or get somewhere that the car can't go. And I know this car was supernatural. It could crush through everything and then rebuild itself. It is that at no point in time did I find it, it funny. I didn't even find the book all that fun. So that's my number five. Next up is the one that I don't think he was trying to be scary at all with. Maybe with may, the, the future connotations of what happened. Maybe that was some horror there. But 11-22-63. I found this to be, especially the middle of the book, oh, just really, really, really boring and frustrating. And there's a love story in here I didn't care anything about. But the, uh, the biggest issue I had with the non scare there's not enough... There's not enough drama in this book. There's there's no race against time, and part of that problem is the fact that he has to wait five years before anything will happen, and he always has he always has the option to reset everything, um, and that's going to be a problem coming up in the number one spot. But number four, definitely eleven twenty two sixty three. Nothing scary in it whatsoever. Um, next up we have one, and this one does have some intentional scary stuff, I think, anyways, which is Under the Dome. This does have horror aspects, um, but I think some of the horror aspects that he used, like the meth addict, or the cook, or whatever you want to call him, and then the aliens at the end, it's just, it's just, just not that good. Um, there, there were too many problems with uh, the ending from my own liking. The rest of the book was thrilling. It was a fun adventure up until the end and then we got the the throwaway, you know, crapshoot that, you know, that I feel that it was a super cop-out. Um, but then again, it's what ties it into the world, so maybe it wasn't a cop-out. Who knows? Um, a lot of people call, you know, anything supernatural a cop-out, and that's not what I'm getting at. It just felt like he got to a certain point and he's like, this is the only thing it could be, so let's use that. So that one, Ed didn't scare me at all whatsoever. Um, none of the creepy like hallway watching that the that the cook does. None of that stuff really scared me. Uh, the next two are what I would consider horror novels. Um, novels that their main intention is to scare you that Stephen King completely dropped the ball on. The first one is, of course, <laughs> Dreamcatcher. We all probably knew it was going to be on the list. Um, there's nothing scary about the shit weasels. Um, there's not, nothing scary about anything in this book, I don't think. Um, I know Landon will probably disagree. I know several other people will probably disagree. But um, everything that tried to be scary in here failed because he went also the comedic route with it. Uh, Mr. Gray with his English accent, he, he was never scary, he was never sinister, um, he was more like one of those old cartoon, eh, I'm gonna get you, see, that, that, that kind of thing. It, there was never anything, um, and I know that wasn't the right voice, but <laughs> there wasn't anything that ever scared me. I didn't care about any of the characters, so I, I couldn't have cared less if something bad happened to them. Um, so that one, but I think intentionally it was supposed to be a horror novel. There's some blood, guts, and gore and whatnot. And that was the main intention was to try and get back on track after his accident, trying to rekindle some of the stuff. And I wish he would have went strictly literary after his accident. We might have gotten more like Duma Key or Lisey Story, that kind of thing. We might have got more books like that instead of him trying to recapture it and fix the Tommyknockers and all the other stuff that he went into that trying. Now, the number one book on this list. The number one least scary Stephen King book has a huge problem with it. 
Um, if in case you haven't read, I don't know why you're watching this video if if you don't like spoilers because of course we're going to be talking about spoilers. But uh, Doctor Sleep, I honestly have no idea what possessed him to make one of the main characters so overpowered. Um, Abra in here is it? I never had any concern for Danny or her or anybody in the book. I had no concern whatsoever because it is established very early on that Abra Stone is amazing. That there is no stopping her, that she can do whatever she wants to. She is the pinnacle of what Danny could have been. She has all these superhuman abilities, and then you put her up against these knockoff vampires, the true knot. And it, there, there was no suspense. I mean, even in the, the very last section of the book, the, the ending is so anticlimactic for that reason alone. Now, I did give this book three stars because it does have some great scenes in it, especially Danny's recovery. But as far as the ending, it was, it was, it was silly. There was, there was no way that, I mean, it's almost like having, you know, uh, Superman fight Lex Luthor without a power suit. Or, with, actually, it, it'd be more like Superman fighting the Joker. Um, with no technology or anything, he would just, you know, crush him or throw him in jail. It's, it's that kind of overpoweredness that ruined the book for me. And when there's no tension, there's no drama. Now, before Aubrey comes into the story, it's great. It's terrific because you have this, uh, you, you have this very human story, and Aubrey can't do anything about Danny's alcoholism. He can't do anything about that. And had it been just a story about him in this convalescent home, I probably would have liked that a lot more than what we end up getting with these vampires roaming. Anyways, these psychic vampires, whatever they are. Uh, Rose the Hat was a crap villain. There's nothing scarier. But the scariest thing about Rose is her picture on the cover of this book. So, what do you think? Did I get any of these right? I am sure you will think I got some of them wrong. So, please leave your comments down below. Do you have a top five least scary Stephen King books? I think I have a top five scary Stephen King books. So... Compare that one to this one. See if you can pick out some of the reasons, you know, so, some of my own fears, what might have made those books scary, what made me laugh these books off. Who knows? But leave all the comments down there in the doobly-doo. Until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!